I had a hard time coming up with a title that doesn't spoil anything major. That being said, spoiler warning. If you haven't caught up to the most recent chapter, 249, you will be spoiled, and if you don't know what Jujutsu Kaisen is, why are you even here? Go away already and watch the show. Final warning, there will be spoilers. Let's start off with chapter 236, the main focus of this video. If you read it, you would know that there are now two pieces of Gojo. So, yeah, Gojo is dead. Or is he? Which is of course what I'm going to be complaining about. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't mind when characters are killed off. As a matter of fact, I encourage killing off characters. Sappy series that use the power of love and friendship to beat everything annoy me. You can't win every fight. You inevitably lose one day, and killing off characters can lead to growth in the remaining characters. But what I don't condone is poorly written deaths, and Gojo's defeat is a perfect example of what irks me. I knew Gage hated Gojo, but damn. Anyways, moving on to my list of annoyances. First off, we have the fact that Gojo was even beaten in the first place. Let me just start off by stating the obvious. Sukuna wouldn't have won without Mahoraga. Which brings me to my first list of plot conveniences. The first of which being how he has a very low chance of finding a suitable vessel that won't straight up just die from ingesting a finger. But luckily for him, there's another suitable vessel right next to his current vessel. Which just so happens to be a 10 shouters technique user. AKA, the only scene that's been known to beat a 6 eyes user and a limitless user. I could be wrong about the vessel scene. It's not exactly clear how vessels work for Sukuna. The translation says it's a 1 in a million chance of being a suitable vessel that won't just die from eating a finger. But translations don't tend to be entirely accurate, so we can just assume it's a low chance. That being said, we don't know if Sukuna can choose vessels he wants to inhabit, and everyone that Sukuna doesn't like just dies. But anyways, since we don't know the exact conditions for a vessel, let's just envision what the fight would have looked like without Mahoraga doing all the work. The only way Sukuna would have been able to hurt Gojo without Mahoraga is by using domain amplification, which to simplify it, is just deploying an empty domain without creating a barrier. The curse techniques flow into the empty space and basically get neutralized. However, domain amplification is only strong enough to negate infinity, which has a low cursed energy output. But against techniques with higher outputs like blue, red, and hollow purple, it just reduces the effects. In short, domain amplification is a dampener that's strong enough to negate infinity, but only weakens other techniques. However, domain amplification doesn't come without its drawbacks. It stops the user from using their own innate techniques, therefore turning them into Yuji. Think of domain amplification as an empty bucket. The bucket is big enough to take in infinity, but if you start pouring blue or red into the bucket, it starts overflowing. Even during a domain battle, Sukuna had to use domain amplification. While Gojo did start off losing when it came to a domain battle, after shrinking his domain, he was able to gain the upper hand. So Sukuna wasn't going to win by engaging in domain battles. I mean, even before Mahoraga adapted to any of Gojo's techniques, Sukuna was getting his ass whooped. At this point, it was basically just Gojo versus Yuji, with Gojo just hurling blue and red at Sukuna. Even when Sukuna started pulling out the other Shadow Shikigamis as support, he was still losing. Hmm. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't think either one of them would have won the fight. They both essentially have infinite cursed energy. Gojo doesn't have a massive amount of cursed energy. However, he uses infinitesimal amounts of cursed energy thanks to his six eyes. The amount he uses is so little that he actually replenishes more cursed energy naturally over time than what he actually uses. And Sukuna has more than twice as much cursed energy as Yuta. He's also extremely efficient with his cursed energy usage, and he actually would be more efficient than Gojo were it not for the six eyes, which means both of them essentially have infinite cursed energy, therefore meaning they both have infinite healing as well. And with Sukuna using domain amplification to reduce the effects of Gojo's techniques, while Gojo only has to deal with physical attacks from Sukuna, neither of them can really inflict a fatal blow. And every domain battle they do pretty much ends in a tie, with Sukuna taking more damage but nothing fatal. 
And after each domain battle, their techniques are burnt out, so their cursed energy usage is forcibly increased for a short duration. Meaning that Rizan Mahorad probably would have just been an endless battle until one of them ran out of cursed energy. But since we have no idea how much cursed energy they actually use and how vague the mechanisms of burnout and output are, it's hard to make a proper conclusion. So I could be wrong. Now, even if we were to swap out Megumi and replace him with Sukuna's original form, the outcome probably still won't change. The fight will be more difficult for Gojo since two arms versus four and all that. But that's only the arms. Having two mouths really doesn't have much of a use. What's he gonna do? Run his mouse twice as much? There's no point chanting incantations for strengthening curse techniques when you can't even use any curse techniques, because you're using domain amplification. We'll never know who actually wins in a fight with on Mahoraga, unless Gege makes a statement himself. Which would probably just be more Sukuna's support. Damn it. In the end, it still comes down to what Gege decides. Welp. Anyways. Up until Gojo became a Kit Kat bar, Sukuna was getting his ass handed to him on a silver platter. Until suddenly, he equipped his title, the King of Plot Armor. Which brings me to my next segment of complaints. Sukuna, the King of Plot Armor. Sukuna's dismantle and cleave aren't inherently strong techniques. They're only strong because it's Sukuna using them. With over twice as much cursed energy as Yuta, and basically the same efficiency as Gojo, he can just endlessly spam cleave and dismantle. Sukuna might as well be the main character of JJK purely based on how much plot armor he has. While it does kind of make sense for Sukuna to have that much cursed energy since he's a quasi-cursed spirit and all that. Especially when you consider that Yuta's whole gimmick was having a shit ton of cursed energy. And Sukuna just casually comes along and doubles that. I assume cursed objects are like wine. The more they age, the stronger they get. I vaguely remember something about cursed objects getting stronger over time. So the fingers probably just accumulated cursed energy over time. You could also argue that Gojo has plot armor too. But you see, the difference between Sukuna and Gojo is that Sukuna is basically built upon pure plot armor, while Gojo is more... Oh shit, I made this guy's skill set basically unbeatable. How can I get rid of him when he's literally invincible? The only plot armor Gojo did have was his two black flashes against Sukuna and learning reverse technique on the brink of death against Toji. But the latter is kind of null since that was an arc in the past, before the ongoing events where Gojo has already been shown to be alive. Can't really do anything about that. And now let's finish this segment by adding some polish to the armor. With the fact that Sukuna is able to use techniques other than his innate ones. Considering how he said open before pulling out the flames in chapter 115, he probably has something similar to Yuta's cursed locker scene. Except Sukuna probably stores his techniques in his shrine. I mean the motherfucker basically has a shrine gun at this point. He can copy any technique as long as they aren't innate. With how vague Sukuna's skill set is and the Hyan era being a complete mystery, it just means that Gege can do any amount of ass pulling and it would still somehow make sense because high era. But I swear, if the next chapter shows that he can somehow copy innate techniques because of some bullshit like, if I just copy the flow of cursed energy I can mimic innate techniques, then just wow. Anyways, Sukuna was a likable character at the beginning of the series, with his carefree nature of living how he wants. But the recent chapters have kind of been contradicting his character. Now he's just getting obnoxious. Auto fraud memes are making a lot more sense now. You can't just write the king of curses Ryomin Sukuna feels nervous for the first time in a thousand years. Then immediately in the next chapter cut to him monologuing over the halves of Gojo, explaining how he cuts through infinity. And kind of just kills his character from being someone worthy of holding the title of king and makes him come off as more of a pretentious douche. We get a pretty good idea of just how much Gege hates Gojo. The way Gojo lost was just disrespectful. We don't even get to see the end of the fight where Sukuna concentrates on pulling off the cut that cuts through every scene. We just get some spirit realm shit then immediately cutting to Gojo lying on the ground in pieces. Which leads me to the final segment of complaints, the ambiguity of Gojo's supposed death. But before that, here's a disclaimer. I am not a biology or medical major. 
I'm using the power of Google for all this. So take this however you want. Anyways, from a purely medical point of view, it's highly unlikely that Gojo would die from being cut in half. If he was cut in half vertically, it would have made sense. But horizontally, no way. I mean, even Frieza survived that, and he doesn't even have regeneration. He wasn't even cut through most of his vital organs. The only thing that got cut were his lungs. The cut was too high to hit most of his vital organs. At worst, he got bits of his stomach and liver shaved off. Let me give you a point of reference. In reality, normal people don't die instantly when they get cut in half from the waist. There's a painful couple of minutes where you're still alive and bleeding out while your organs are all exposed before you finally die as your organs shut down. The time window you have for medical treatment depends on the health of the patient and the severity of the damage done. It's not impossible to survive being cut in half. The chances are slim, but it is possible. With one such case being Lauren Showers, who got cut in half by a forklift. He lived despite having to wait for paramedics to arrive and perform temporary on-site treatment before taking more time to transport him to a surgeon. Go Google the name if you want to learn more. But this isn't exactly reality. It's a world setting that takes place in a shonen jump, where organs are pretty much non-essential and non-existent until there's a panel that calls for ripping someone's heart out. And people can literally paint the floor red with like 20 liters of their own blood and still somehow be fine. As proven by when Sukuno ripped out Yuji's heart and threw hands with Megumi for a few minutes, and Yuji still had time to say some final words, despite his body having fought without a heart for a few minutes. Although, given Yuji does have a unique body. Anyways, the point is it takes a lot more to kill someone. But when you're also a Jujutsu sorcerer, that can also use reverse technique. You're basically unkillable unless you get hit with instant deaths, like getting your brain destroyed, or you run out of cursed energy. And for those that don't believe reverse technique was strong enough to save Gojo, here's another reference point. Just one chapter ago, Gojo got half his arm cut off, which he regrew in just a few seconds after increasing his output with the two black flashes. It doesn't even make sense how Gojo's upper half got blown off. His upper half would have had to slide off to fall onto the ground, and with his current regeneration speed, he could have healed himself before his upper half even detached from his lower half. But because of plot convenience, that didn't happen. Even then, it would have taken him at least a minute to completely regenerate his lower half. And don't give me that bullshit about organs being harder to heal. We just saw Sukuna and Gojo blowing up and regrowing parts of their brains just to skip their skill cooldowns. So with all of this evidence, there's no possible way a reverse technique user could die from being cut in half at the ribs. Gojo even got teleported to Shoko not long after, which already beats paramedic response times. And Shoko can apply reverse technique to other people at a decreased efficiency, which Utahime could just buff. Logically speaking, there's no way Gojo dies when he has everything going in his favor. I understand needing to take him out for the plot to progress. Just have him staying unconscious for as long as you want him to be. Hell, you can even have him be unconscious until the series ends for all care. But if he dies from a death as contrived as this one, then that's just foul. I could care less if Gojo got killed off. Either way, the series probably has like another 50 chapters before it ends, so he's probably not gonna have a chance to reappear anyways. The only thing I care about is if a death makes sense. It stresses me out when a character dies from some nonsensical bullshit. It's the main reason why I avoid watching horror movies. He also could have just as easily had Uraume give Sukuna some ancient curse tool like the inverted spear of heaven. And that would have been a hundred times more believable than getting a perfect vessel that just so happens to be a 10 shadows technique user. I mean Gojo didn't know the inverted spear of heaven even existed until it was in his neck. Well. Now that I'm done ranting about Gojo, I'm going to talk about my predictions for what's going to happen in future chapters. Because as we all know, fan series are the most accurate predictions and aren't baseless predictions on the basis of pure and utter bullshit. So stick around at your own risk. With Gojo out of the picture, the other characters are given enough time to fight and beat Sukuna. With the most recent matchup being Yuta and Yuji versus Sukuna. There are three possible ways this could pan out. Option A, 
the most unlikely scenario being that Yuji Takno Jutsu Sukuna, who isn't exactly the most agreeable guy out there. Then option B, a more likely scenario, where Gege decides, fuck everyone, I'm ending the series early and Sukuna kills everyone, merges Tengen, then some final panel where Sukuna rushes out and merges Tengen, and the series ends. Or option C, the most likely scenario, Yuji and Yuta beat Sukuna. Allow me to elaborate. Since Megumi is still serving as Sukuna's vessel, the goal is to separate Sukuna's soul from Megumi's body, which is what they tried to do with the Executioner's sword, before Higuruma went and got his ass beat, losing the Executioner's sword. Which just leaves us with Yuji and his soul-based techniques. There's a whole roster of side characters left. Maki, Angel, Jozo, Miwa, but all of them are more useless than shit. Other than Angel, most of them can't even use reverse technique or have a domain, and not being able to use reverse technique just means death when fighting Sukuna. If Gojo couldn't beat him, none of them can. Out of all of the side characters, Yuta has the most useful skill sets. With his copy technique, he can act as support for Yuji by stalling or immobilizing Sukuna with cursed speech or angels extinguish. And since Sukuna threw away the Ten Shadows technique to incarnate in his true form, it just makes the battle of attrition much more viable. Which is great when you have two of the tankiest characters teaming up. Yuta is basically just a nerfed version of Sukuna, a shit ton of cursed energy, being able to use multiple techniques, and having reversed curse technique. And Yuji has reverse technique along with his abnormally durable body. Which leaves us with two possible ways for beating Sukuna. A. Yuji swaps souls with Sukuna and becomes roommates with Megumi, forever living as a voice in the back of his mind, while Yuta kills Yuji's body. Or option B. Yuji does what he does best, beating the shit out of people. Or in this case, beating Sukuna's soul out of Megumi. All in all, making this the final battle against Sukuna, and let me just add, Yuta's domain is probably the most visually appealing domain so far. Now, after they finish with the Sukuna arc, there's going to be the cleanup arc for ending the Colin Games or the Kenjaku's plan arc. I know Kenjaku got beheaded and stabbed to the head. But if history has proven anything, it's that most manga authors will do a bit of ass pulling to extend the series a little longer. Especially when their antagonist is some wacky dude that's been alive for over a thousand years body snatching and doing weird shit like getting wailed by Jin. Kenjaku is literally just a cursed spirit brain with arms and legs. I mean, how else would you perform a brain transplant on yourself? We just see him get stabbed in the head. Usually when that happens, you die. But his brain is kind of also his body, so he could still be alive. And he just so happens to also be near a conveniently placed Takaba, who also may or may not be dead, thanks to his confusing ass technique. Knowing him, he probably thought it would be funny if he died after doing the show off his dreams. Which would leave Kenjaku as a very convenient vessel to use, but he might not actually use Takaba as a vessel even if he survived. He did develop a weird form of bromance with Takaba, but that's beside the point. What I'm trying to say is that Kenjaku's plan will probably somehow still succeed, regardless of if he's dead or not, giving us merged Tengen. This gives us a possibility of a Gojo comeback, but I wouldn't count on it. In the end, the entire series hinges on how Gege feels about the series. Do they want to just quickly end the series, or do they want to draw it out a little longer? When all is said and done, it doesn't really matter if Gojo is dead or alive. With the series in its end game stages, there's really not much screen time left for all the characters. Would you call it screen time or something else when it comes to manga? I don't know. But personally, I think the best way to write Gojo's comeback is to have him come back in the epilogue with a callback to when Yuji came back to life and pop out of a box. Having him come back for more fights would kind of just take away from a grand series finale and just turn it into a Gojo finale. And look, while I do hate how Gojo's defeat was written, there's not really a reason to hate the author. I mean, who actually gets tilted enough over some fictional characters to send death threats? The only people that would ever do that are Twitter users. Get a life, man. On an unrelated note, 
while I was looking into how long a person could survive after being split in half at the torso. I used ChatGPT because I was too lazy to Google it myself. This is how well it went. As if anyone would choose bisection as a method of self-harm. How would you even pull that off? This isn't some video game where there's comically large axes swinging from the ceiling. And one final note. I still find Sukuna's blatant refusal to acknowledge any of Yuji's accomplishments pretty funny. My boy learned reverse technique in a month and Sukuna is still judging him while crossing all four of his arms. Anyways, I finished speaking my mind. Now, piss off. And go argue in the comments about God knows what. <laughs>